can you explain what you liked about Clint Kubiak and kind of specifically try to identify, I mean, that's such a wide spread system that's now on half the different offenses in the league, but, but what part of it you feel like it'll be the Saints version of it? Yeah, well, look, I, I mean, I would say this, you know, initially I'd say I've, I've kind of followed the Kubiak family. Gary played at Texas A&M, so hell, I grew up watching him uh, play football. Uh, he was coaching at A&M when I was playing. Clint was probably running around out, out on the field at that time. Um, and, and so I've kind of followed that, that family. I've followed that system of football. I've been against that system of football. Um, and I think it's really difficult to defend. Um, and so that was kind of the initial thought that drew me uh, to, to Clint and, and that system. And then and just getting an opportunity to visit with him and then doing my background research and people that I've talked to that have worked with him uh, or he's worked for, um, you know, this guy is a, he's, he's highly intelligent, uh, he's creative, um, and he's, he's a grinder. He's going he's gonna to work to find the, uh, the answers and, and the solutions. And so uh, I'm excited about, you know, what I think he can bring to our organization. What, what can you say about where you guys stand with Marshawn Lattimore? I, I know his contract got tinkered with. I mean, yeah, have there look, been talks with him about yeah, look, staying together? Look, possible trade? Lattimore's on our football team. He's a good football player. He's been a good football player for us. And so, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of things that happen, you know, throughout the offseason. But, um, but, you know, Lat's a, Lat's a big part of our team right now. In talking to Clint, who has he said he's excited to work with on this offense? Well, look, I, I think, you know, the interesting thing is, is when a new group comes in, um, you know, they they, they kind of look at your team and they, and they 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 look at it from a from a positive perspective. And so, uh, the exciting thing was, you know, I think the offensive staff as a whole was was really excited about working with a lot of the pieces uh, to the puzzle that we have on offense. And so, um, look, I think that's. I think that brings an excitement to, to me in terms of what I think we can do offensively. How big a part is getting the run game back going and getting this offense to where, where you want it to be? Well, look, I think we threw the ball fairly decently last year. And so I think where we weren't as good is being able to run the football. And I think that's, I think that's an important piece to playing good, productive offense. I think that helps the quarterback out when you're able to run the football and now all of a sudden you come off a heavy, heavy run fake and you're able to throw a play action pass uh, and create some explosive plays down the field. So um, I, I, I've always felt like that's important uh, in, in being a balanced offense, uh, being able to run the football, and, and, and then being able to throw it when you need to. The Kubiak name kind of has some weight to it when you're talking about like NFL rushing attacks too. And yeah, well, look, you know, it was amazing when I first started the whole process, you know, and, and Clint was a guy that I was interested in. Um, I really didn't go to Clint's stats. I went to Gary's stats. And I looked at all the top offenses that he's been a part of. Um, and and uh, so I kind of started there. And then, and then you go and you start you know, following Clint and, and what he's been able to accomplish and who he's been around and who he's been with. Uh, and, and you get excited about the vision of where we think this thing can go. Did you see if Gary was interested in having or even not for the coordinator position, just to roll on top because he's Brian and Bill Callahan work together. Is that something that Clint trusts interest in now? Yeah, look, um, I think I think Gary's comfortable, at, you know, living the retired life, um, you know, and yet I think, you know, there may be some things that we can lean on him for. Um, you know, obviously he'll, 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 I mean, I hired his son, so he's going to be around to help out, it, you know, if we need it. You, you obviously didn't make many changes to the defensive staff then. Uh, the, the one element, uh, you guys changed a lot of personnel on the defensive line last year. You brought in a new defensive line coach. I mean, why didn't you get the, the run defense where you wanted it to be, and, and how far off do you think that is? Yeah, um, well, I don't, think it's qu I don't think it's as far off as, as, as many might think. Um, you know, obviously, look, we played – really good run defense for a long period of time. And so obviously anytime there's a drop off in that area, you know, it's a little bit of a cause for, uh, for concern. Um, but I, I feel good about where we're going to be, you know, in terms of being able to stop the run. And ultimately, look, 
ultimately the job of the defense is is to a get the ball back for the offense, uh, which I felt like we did a pretty good job of taking the ball away, uh, and b eliminate points. And I feel like we did a pretty good job of doing that also. So uh, although I think we need to improve in the run game, I think there's some, some things that we need to be better there. I think we need to improve in terms of our ability to rush the passer. Um, um, and I don't think that we played um, as well as I think we're capable of defensively. Uh, and yet I still think we were productive. Did you feel that the loss of Malcolm Roach to injury during the season had any, had any impact on that um, sort of downward turn? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, look, I think um, Malcolm's one of those players that, you know, uh, he's got some hidden production. Um, and, and not just hidden production, but there, there's also an element of the type of leader that he is. He brings a, 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 an enthusiasm you know, to the defense. Um, and yeah, I think you, you know, when, you, when you lose a player like that, particularly at a position like that, defensive line, and, and in particular inside a defensive tackle, uh, those, those guys are hard to replace. Can you speak to how important this offseason is for Penning just Considering it's his first offseason, he really gets to work on technique. And yeah, look, I think it's huge. I mean, I think, look, here's the good news. The good news is, is that, you know, he's coming in with a clean slate. Uh, he's coming in healthy, so he's going to have a, an opportunity to go through a full offseason program, both from a lifting perspective and from a practice perspective. And I think those are two critical things when you're talking about, you know, still a, a young guy. I know this is going into his third year, but he missed basically his whole rookie season. Uh, and then last year, um, you know, he, he missed all the offseason program before, you know, being put in as the, as the starting left tackle. So I think this is going to be an uh, important offseason for him. Um, and, and I think being able to start on a clean slate with a, with a lot of new eyes on you, uh, I think will be beneficial for him. Speaking of health, how's Ryan Matrick going? Yeah, look, I think Ryan's getting better. Um, you know, he's obviously – um, you know, he's, he's, he's got a knee that, that, you know, he and we are going to have to manage. Uh, but we feel much better about where he's at today than where he was maybe, you know, a month, month and a half ago. Dennis, we've seen like a handful of head coaches start to not come to this event and smaller staffs here. Why, why is it important for you guys to kind of show up? Yeah, look, I, I, think, um, I think the biggest thing for me is being able to you know, I've seen some of the tape on these guys, not to the extent that I that I that I want to, um, but I think the biggest thing is kind of being able to put, you know, a face to the film, um, and and really get a chance to, you know, kind of begin the, the the evaluation process not from a from a physical athletic standpoint as much, uh, more so from uh, the type of person that he is. How well does the kid learn? You know, what are the what are the things that are important to him? Uh, where does he see himself uh, in terms of his development? So, um, I still feel like this is an important part of the evaluation process. Is some of the athletic stuff like has that become obsolete at all with like the tracking and some of the different data you guys can get? No, look, I don't believe it's obsolete. I mean, I think there's still some things that you can uh, gather from this. I think this is a, uh, you know. Look, it's one thing when you're watching a guy on tape and on film, and then all of a sudden you see him live. It's like going to a, a, a live game. It, it just looks different, and you get a better feel for what it actually is rather than just um, you know watching it on a TV screen. Uh, I know obviously a lot was made about Jameis at the end of the season, but are you able to share a little bit about kind of where things stand with him going into the offseason? Yeah, look. Um, yeah, I think I think I think Jameis is still under contract as we sit here right now, and and uh, there's a lot of things that happen throughout the you know off season program. We'll see see how those things uh, you know play out. But as we sit and look, I know Jameis has said I want to go and be a starter, you know, and and uh, you know obviously that's that's something that that he aspires to do, and um, you know we'll, we'll we'll see how things play out. You mentioned Ramchek. How did the team come out of the season health-wise overall? This is probably always a few surprises about surgeries and things like yeah, that. Yeah, um, there, there was nothing after the season that that uh, that came up of any significance where we were having, um, you know, major surgeries that we didn't know 
were going to take place, um, I'd say we probably had, um, you know, a handful of surgeries that uh, that guys had that we kind of knew, you know, was coming, um, and so, you know, we'll manage that. I, I don't think, um, other than than uh, probably Nephi, I don't know that we have anybody that I expect to not be ready for training camp. There's going to be some guys that will be, you know, minimal to limited throughout, you know, the off-season program, OTAs, minicamp. But um, as we sit here right now, I think he's the only one that I think is probably uh, not going to be ready for the start of training camp. Is Graham Graham Joe part of that surgery group, the minor ones? Yeah, he had a little cleanup in his knee, yeah. I know uh, there's reasons to take training camp out of town because of construction of the facility and stuff. Is that something you felt was this team was ready for? Would you have wanted to do that regardless as a coaching yeah, decision? Yeah. Um, look, I like training in New Orleans. I like training in the heat. I like being able to have the fans come out to practice. Um, and yet that heat element is is a major factor in terms of you know recovery and things of that nature. And so... Um, and I and I think every now and then it's it's good to have a have a change, and so um, kind of excited about it. Um, you know, the 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 motivating factor for it really was all the renovations that were, were we've got going on at the facility. But um, you know, I kind of like the thought of taking the group, you know, out of town and and holding them up in a hotel, and um, our guys really, you know. Developing a uh, you know a bond you know during that time. Uh, I, I been... also like the thought of getting out of New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's... we did that for you. <laughs> <laughs> there's been a lot of talk about culture buy-in and, and stuff, and I know Mickey talked about talking to the players. What what what's your role in that in establishing the culture and establishing the buy-in? Like now that you've got the two years under your belt, that yeah, you look, I, like you need to do. Yeah, I, well, I think it all starts with me, you know, and and so. Um, yeah, I think setting the setting the mindset for the type of team that we're going to be, um, having that filter down through coaching staff and the veteran players, leaders on our football team, um, and and we've got to make sure that we're holding everybody accountable to the standard that we need to have to uh, to have the type of success that we want that we want to have, um, and and look, everybody wants to win. You know, and I think it's my job to teach what it takes to win, um, and, and then and then everybody's got to be held accountable to that standard. And when you went through the uh, uh, like off-season review process, what what were some of the things that you checked off, like self-review, like this is something I want to do better in year three? Um, yeah, well, I th I think that I think I think holding everybody accountable to the standard in, at which we need to uh, be held at, and so. Um, and, and holding the coaches to that standard, and then the coaches holding the players to that standard, um, and players holding each, each other to that standard. And, and like I said, I think that all starts, starts at the top, and that starts with me. You mentioned at the end of last season that with a playoff appearance, there was the potential that Marshawn would have been ready, could have been ready for that game. Did you feel the same about Michael Thomas, or was that injury timeline in a different spot? Yeah, I think it was probably in a different spot. How's he doing now, health wise, and kind of where do things stand? Listen, I, I mean, where he's at exactly in the process, he's in the recovery process, he's in the rehab process. Um, I can't speak to exactly, um, you know, where he's at, but but I know I know that uh, the reports I continue to get from the trainers is that, um, you know, he's making progress. Did he end the pelvic surgery? Um, you know, I'll be honest with you. I can't. I can't remember. I don't think so, but I, I don't. That would have I don't remember. Can we take one or two more? You mentioned earlier, Marshawn, and right now, just as a coach, what is that process like of figuring out who's on the roster? And specifically with him, like if you guys do decide to move on or trade, like that, that's a really big decision. What kind of goes into that? If, however, whatever you end up. Yeah, I mean, I, I think really it's about you know. Um, I think it's about guys um, that we feel like can help us, you know, win football games. Guys that we feel like can uh, continue to build the right type of um, culture here. 
um, and guys that are, you know, willing to do the things that are it's necessary to do to uh, to succeed. And so, um, look, like I said, I mean, Marshawn's part of our football team. He's been a big part of our football team. Um, unfortunately, the last couple of years, health has been a uh, a big factor in that. And so, um, I think the biggest thing is is you know, let's get Marshawn healthy and let's see where we're at as a football team and, um, you know, we'll get the right guys out there that give us a chance to, to win. Does health feel like a future concern for him at all? I mean, I know they were you know, a really I, unique I, Yeah, I, I don't know that those are, are necessarily predictors of, you know, future, you know, injury issues. And yet, look, I think any time you, you have um, some injuries, those, those all – you know, factor into de- any type of decisions that you, that you make. But um, like I said, I, I, look, he's a good football player. He's made a lot of football plays for us. I've been with him for a long time. And, and uh, you know, I think he is a guy that can help us win. All right. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank yep. you, Doug.